So this is the one of the first sets of notes on erosion and deposition. It's kind of an introduction and an introduction into how gravity affects um, erosion and deposition. So the the main point here is that erosion is the transport transporting of weathered material. So we talked about weathering already. We talked about it before the break. And weathering is when rock is broken into smaller pieces. And again, that the surface area is critical for that. The more surface area you have, the faster something weathers. And weathering is just breaking it down into either smaller pieces or changing it chemically so that it's broken down. Um, and it's, it's, it's a different material uh, than it was before. So erosion uh, is the picking up of that material, that weathered rock, and transporting it to another place. The things that do that are streams, so running water. We've talked about, we've seen that in a lab with a whole lot of shaking lab, um, how streams can pick up and carry material. Glaciers, big blocks of ice that um, are the size sometimes of whole continents. And this whole landscape where we live has been shaped by glaciers, so we'll talk about that. Waves, uh, how waves can, can change and pick up material. Wind, wind, we can imagine picking up uh, sand grains or dust and, and carrying them from one place to another. And mass movement or, or gravity, and that's one of the things that we're going to talk about today. The deposition is just the dropping of that material. So weathering breaks it apart, erosion picks it up and carries it, and then deposition is when it gets dropped. So you need to know that the distinction between those three words, because when you see them in a question, you need to know what it's referring to. So deposition is the dropping of that material. So that's the distinction between those three. Now, the first type of weathering that we'll talk about, or sorry, erosion that we'll talk about, is mass movement. And mass movement is primarily happens because of gravity. And all agents of erosion and an agent of erosion is the thing that's causing the erosion. So when I talk about agents of erosion, I'm talking about wind, uh, water, ice. Those are the agents that do the work. So if you think of a secret agent is doing the work of the government uh, in, in a spy novel, they're the, the, the person or the, the entity that's actually doing the work. And that's what we're talking about. An agent of erosion is, is just that. It's something that is doing the work of carrying that material. And they're all driven by gravity. Even, um, even wind is, is somewhat driven by gravity uh, in terms of, of how the material is being, being picked up and dropped. Examples of erosion by gravity alone include landslides, um, things like rocks falling off of a cliff, uh, mass movements uh, where things are falling down steep slopes, uh, without other erosional forces, so without things like water or wind, rocks that are you that are moved by gravity are will usually end up being jagged and rough. So if a rock breaks and falls down a cliff, it's going to have rough edges. It's not going to be smooth like it is when water rolls over it, or if it's rolling in a stream. So that's one of the characteristics of rocks that are are deposited by gravity is that they're jagged and rough. The other thing is that they're unsorted, which means that all the rock sizes are all mixed together. So when you have a landslide fall, all those particles, you're going to have big particles, medium-sized particles, and small particles all mixed together. So if you were to take a, a sample and you take a core of the, of the rock and you look at it from the side, you'll have big particles, medium-sized, some small, it's more big, medium, they'll be all mixed together. And when there's when rocks are sorted, you would have them in layers, like big all in, at the bottom, and then medium, and then small. So that's the difference between something that's sorted and unsorted. And I'll talk we'll talk more about that when we get into water, rivers and streams, sorting material. So that's that's one that's gravity. And I just want to show you uh, some examples, some pictures of, from the U.S. Geological Survey um, or Service. And one of the things that you'll see here, this whole landscape was um, caused by, uh, changed by 
gravity pulling this rock down. And generally what happens is you get very steep hills. So you get these steep hills. And then what ends up happening is that you get a tremendous amount of rain. And that tends to loosen the soil particles with, in relationship to one another. And oftentimes the other thing that causes these landslides are when you uh, take away the vegetation the roots that hold the soil particles together, that's one of the key things that helps to hold the soil together are the roots. And if those roots aren't there and it gets really, really wet, gravity takes over and it pulls that stuff down and, and the earth will, sometimes it'll, um, what's called an earth flow where they actually, it actually flows almost like water. And the whole thing sort of slides down. The, um, exam some of the examples of different types of mass movement, this is also called mass movement when rocks are moving by gravity, uh, is that you can get these different types of landslides. Um, sometimes you just get rocks falling and really steep cliffs. Um, they will just topple right over where this breaks. Sometimes you'll get ice filling in here, expanding when it freezes and it cracks it enough that, that it topples over. Um, you get a, an avalanche or an earth flow when it's really almost like a river of, of mud or earth flowing. Um, creeping is a little bit slower where you'll actually see like telephone poles and trees actually um, moving and as the, as the ground moves it, it tends to cause the, the telephone poles and the trees or the fence lines to kind of tilt. Um, sometimes you'll see it in, in steep areas where you have uh, a cemetery, the, all the cemetery headstones are starting to tilt because they're sort of slowly creeping. Um, this moves over long periods of time, 10 years, 50 years, something like that. Um, and then lateral spreading is that. So those are just different examples of um, mass movement.